Today we'll take a look at a new vector network analyzer. I got it at a budget price, get it out of the box, see how it works, and check it out. So I'm totally new to the world of VNAs or vector network analyzers and it only came about that I found them when I was trying to test out some antennas and I had no real good way of doing that. So it sent me down the path here to start learning some more. I grabbed this VNA from Amazon at a pretty budget price and Canadian pesos, that's pretty darn good. It came in in a day or two and here it is. This unit comes in a pretty nifty clear plastic case. It comes with the SMA cables, a load and an open and a straight through connector so we can do the calibration on the unit. Everything we need. This video won't be a who's who or a what's what of VNAs. I am totally new to this and this is how I learn by picking up equipment like this and learning from others by watching YouTube videos and reading a ton. It has a screen protector on it that's uh, kind of sandwiched underneath the PCB cover on the front, so we have to go ahead and disassemble the unit to get that out of there. I really love this little wow stick screwdriver. It's pretty handy for stuff like this, stuff with low torque jobs. And this is their kind of bottom of the barrel model. There's a much newer one, I think David Watts did a review on it too, that works a lot better. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. VNA has an onboard battery so you don't have to feed it via USB all the time, just charge it periodically. The touchscreen display works really good but you're going to want a stylus. Uh, your finger is a little bit big, at least mine is, for most of the buttons on this thing. Pretty much the only gotcha to using these things is anytime you change your span or your, your size of your display or what frequencies you're looking at, you need to run a calibration or recall a calibration that you've done for that exact same setup. Otherwise, you're not going to get the sampling across the screen. You're not going to get the display, the resolution that you would uh, if it was properly calibrated. So there's not much to it. You just follow the instructions here. You do the open, which is you use the open connection. You do the short, which is the shorted connection. The load is the 50 ohm load connection, which is a little bit different color usually on the SMA. The isolation, the through is just the through. You put the wire uh, from one to the other, join them together, and then click done and click save. That's it. Do this anytime you change what you're looking at on the screen. It's critical if you want to get good measurements. And for you Smith chart lovers, well, here's the, the whole works all at once. This is a very busy screen because we've got a bunch of different displays going on. Not something we're often going to do. So as usual, to learn what to expect to see, well, I grab some samples and start playing with them. In this case, it's my UV3R Baofeng radio. And I go ahead and do some testing on the antenna and just take a look and see where this antenna is resonant and what its sort of characteristics are. And it's pretty much as expected for a two meter, 70 centimeter uh, antenna system. Uh, actually really good on this one. But uh, uh, like I mentioned, in this video I can't teach anyone anything yet because I'm still learning myself and on the sites uh, that are selling these as well as the firmware site I was able to find the the menu structure map which is pretty handy to take a look and know where all the menus are at as well as I found this cool cross-reference of return loss versus VSWR which helped me understand what return loss really was for some reason I was struggling with return loss as displayed on, on the screen and it took a, another YouTuber, I'll link them down below, uh, who made it pretty clear and made my mistakes painfully obvious as to as to what it was and how to equate it to kind of yelling into a canyon and, uh, and how much was returned versus how much was lost. Pretty cool. 
And here's the real use case for this system. Uh, I've been troubleshooting these 433 megahertz uh, radio systems and I ended up having all sorts of trouble with one in particular. So now with VNA, I can finally check and see what these antennas are up to. And in this case, uh, once I did some proper testing, not shown here, I did find these antennas are absolutely horrible and not resonant on 433 very much at all. So. Uh, one more thing contributing to the problem, possibly. Being able to actually analyze an antenna properly now, pretty cool. Being able to see the music here, this is one of the 433s, or not one of the 433s at all. So very interesting to actually be able to measure things properly. And I'm going to learn a lot along the way. As I mentioned before, I'm still uh, actually working on my amateur radio license. So I need to, I need to pick up my skills on a lot of this stuff. And I'm not an RF engineer. I never will be, but uh, I, I like, I like knowing things. <laughs> it's particularly stuff like this in the RF realm really interests me and helps us uh, helps us build better projects and um, share more things and advance together. Super happy with this unit. I can't wait to use it a little bit more in some projects and some videos. I have a, another VNA coming up, including uh, might even get into some spectrum analyzer work. Cheers, guys. I, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, Hope you guys stick around for some more videos.